once more, we're back again. So if you've been joining me for the last couple of days, you probably checked out my collab and you probably checked out my comfy workflows for the unit implementation. So this is stable cascade. If we go into files, it's going to show us that, uh, we were using all of these, which was initially, that's the initial release, but now we're going into comfy checkpoints where we just need these two and you put them in the models checkpoints folder. All right. So it simplifies the process a lot. And because they released that we've now updated. So we've got V30 text to image, V40 image to image, V50 image to vision, because they've got clip vision built in and image to remix, which is taking multiple images. So I thought I'd just give you a uh, little show on what that's about. So you could find all of them in the same place. You get the uh, workflows here. So there's 30, there's 40, there's 50. And so essentially this is the text to image updated for checkpoints. I did put a note just here with a link to the checkpoints if you get lost but they go in models checkpoints just like normal. All right. So this is much nicer than before because the initial method, when they first released it, it was a bit of a faff trying to put it all together. So that's text to image. Then we have the image to image version, which is just like the one I released earlier, V18. It's got all the same features, only now it's using the checkpoint method. I showed it to you in the last video. So I've taken the example workflows and adapted them to how I've got mine set up with the little bits and pieces. And then we can build from here. So we've got our clean base now. We've also got image to remix, which we'll take a look at. So <clears throat> let's take a look at it. So what I've done is I've set up something here. If you guys want this, then just let me know in the comments. But basically, I've got it set up. For, uh, all four of them are here. So all I do is I press Control, Select, and then I can toggle the section on or off with Control B. So uh, we're going to look at text to image first. I've got myself a, a nice random text. Uh, testing prompt here. It'll just randomize a lot of things. Uh, it's included in the workflow. Okay. I've also left all the notes here about sort of what aspect ratios you should go for and things. Um, everything's sort of left default. So you can go ahead and do what you want with it. Uh, the only thing I've changed obviously in mine is I've injected the prompts. So I'm using, I'm using this prompt for all four of them. All right. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. So. Let's hit prompt and see what we get. So these are going to be 1024 by 1024. So we're just taking a look at this. So this is the sort of thing which we're getting from the, uh, in fact, let's give us two, two per two for, and then we'll run through them. So, uh, just to run through what's going on here for people that care. So it's, it's pretty much exactly the same. All that's happening is instead of a unit and clip loaders, we're using a checkpoint, which has the clip and the VAE built in. In case you're wondering, the FNet is built into stage C and then stage A is built into stage B. So that's how they did it in the end. I'm assuming it's the same clip in both sides. I haven't tested that yet. So all the same settings. You want to make sure that you've got one denoise on Dino, Dino's. You've got to make sure you've got one denoise on both samplers for text to image. And then we'll get some nice images. All right. I'm not using any negatives here because uh, I want to keep it loose for when we get, I mean, it is, it's exactly the same as it was. Um, nothing really changed except that now you've got a checkpoint loader and everything's kind of in the model, which is nice. So I still think the old method is good if you're trying to squeeze it onto a smaller card. There was one guy who actually said he managed to get it running on, I think, a two gigabyte card, which is insane. And you certainly can't do that with this one because it's just too big. But maybe they're going to bring out smaller ones soon. I don't know. Anyway, let's just not two gig, four gig. So let's move on to image to image. So this is the big one that we released today. And it's all, it changed like three times in a day because at first it came out without this, which meant we weren't able to actually do uh, stage B. So that meant now we've got stage B, we've got a little bit more control. So here we go. I've taken my, my thing, my, my lovely lady I generated in stable diffusion 2.1. 
and then we're going to do some stuff to her so she we got 0.4 on the first k sampler so remember it's that one which controls the strength i'll put these images up in the galleries for each of the workflows so like i said it's definitely working mm -hmm. i've got a 40 percent so that it keeps the image we'll get the second preview here now so that's, that's pretty good it's not bad considering the prompt is all over the place okay so let's just turn on now this one's interesting this is a new one so let's just take a quick look at this instead of the checkpoint loader we're using the unclip checkpoint loader which has the additional clip vision which we can put into clip vision in code so then we feed our image soldier man into image and passes the uh your prompt and then we get unclip conditioning which is taking the output from vision and then combining the conditioning together to go into the case sampler again you're going to need a high uh, denoise of one for this so off we go looks like with this one see i pref i like this because i can i know i can just put in big numbers and get big image um i haven't tried it yet but let's just give it a blast while we're here so we'll just type in 2048. It should be able to manage that. And so we got a prompt. That's one of the prompt. That The prompt has made the scene, and then it's put a little soldier guy there. So, yeah, it's not the exact same image, but there you go. You got two. There you go. It is what it is. So let's go for it again, try and make them huge. While it's doing that, we'll take a look at the next one, because the next one's even, even more interesting, in my opinion. You can... Uh... Whoops. There we go. Okay, so this one is called Remix, and essentially it's the same as the last one, but you've got a stack of clipping codes with multiple images. So one image, two image, clipping code, clipping code. They pass over to two clip unconditionings. The clipping codes go into each of the conditionings, but the conditionings here, you'll notice that they're chaining. They're going one into the other and then up. It's a bit hard to say see sometimes with the spaghetti but there you go um and then it's the same from there on right so i had planned on doing like some other stuff like uh face swapping and high res and things like that but they keep changing it <laughs> so i just had to keep on refactoring it um but yeah uh let's give it a go so remember it's got our sci-fi girl and our toy soldier and a randomized prompt that's going to give us like a dystopian environment or a railway or a highway or something. So now it's giving us our woman in her suit in the environment, which is pretty cool. So like I said, with a bit of tweaks and changing what images you're putting in and prompts and whatnot. Yeah, look at that. See, it's not exactly the same outfit, but here yeah, it's pretty cool, like I say. Um, and uh, how big were these? Can I choose the latent? See, the uh, thing I found is that because you can't set on some of these, you can't set the uh, the size because it's taken from the image. And I notice you get black bars if they mismatch, which is kind of annoying. And I was thinking maybe there's a way to intelligently scale with a custom node. Because uh, certainly if you were to scale up the image on the way in, you're going to get a bigger image on the way out with the image to image here. So if I just make myself some space, if I just pull myself out just a little bit, you know, people always ask this, right? Drag out that way, control click, grab the top with let with shift and drag it this way. Now I got space at this end. Look. Right. So, cause what I want to do is I want to do some pre-processing to my image so that it's bigger. This is obviously not a very big image. Uh, maybe it's like a thousand, maybe. But I want to make sure I don't know. So in a way, I should really be checking. It's good. It's a good practice to be checking. So I tend to use a scale, um, and I like it to do it by side. Um, so the one that I like using is Derfu. But there's loads of them, and they all do something similar. So if I say twenty forty eight here, right, then it's gonna take whatever the, whatever this is. It's going to make sure that it's 2048. And if it's square, I know that it is 2048 by 2048, right? So that's good. The best way to do variation is just don't put any 
prompts in. Don't put an empty prompt. That's better. So we've got a much more high quality image. This is what I mean. See, you didn't used to be able to do this. Okay, sure. We could probably do some work. Um, it's a little bit overcooked in a few places, but that's actually some really crazy amounts of detail in some areas. So it's like, got to experiment with the prompt. Remember, I'm using a super random prompt right now. And the negatives probably aren't very good either. But like I said, as a place to start, we had this image. It's gone up to double in the process. So you're kind of getting a 2x upscale for free just from the fact that you're using this. Uh, maybe 3x actually, because I was able to go through 3072. 3, right now it's making it 1024 by 1024. So I'll make it go for 2048, and I bet the images will be better. Yeah, so it actually wants you to make bigger images, regardless of what your prompt is, it wants to make bigger images. So, okay, cool. So yeah, like I said, if you guys want this studio version, I'll go ahead and release it, but it's just something I do to test stuff, so I can just quickly go from bit to bit. Um. I more than likely try to build things out clean so that you can build on top of them and stuff. Um, but as we get extra bits, I'm keeping an eye on it and I'll update them, get them out. But yeah, let me know. Thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.